Hi there and welcome to the Planet Zoo, every animal franchise zoo. Today is, well, it's a momentous occasion that marks the culmination of our extraordinary journey here. From the very first episode, the whole point of this series, we had a challenge in mind, didn't we? Adding every single animal in Planet Zoo into one franchise mode zoo. This is something I've been thinking about for a long time and I really wanted to just see if it was even possible. Well, seven months and 26 episodes later, we have come to the epic conclusion of this series. We stand at the precipice of achieving what we set out to. There's only six species left to add to the zoo, so let's see what we've got left to go in today. We're starting off today with an exhibit species, the Titan Beetle. Now, the final exhibit species going into the zoo, I already set up an exhibit area here behind the saltwater croc enclosure. So here we are, the Titan Beetle is in. Big beastie that one, <laughs> glad it's in a box. Anyway, next habitat animal is the West African Lion. We've been waiting a really long time to put the lions in, haven't we? Since this is the final few animals going in space-wise, I've dedicated this little space up at the top for the final remaining animals to fit in here. Lions, I think they'll fit in nicely with the hyenas we put in last week, so no problems putting them up here at all. So, lion enclosure, I had a good look at this and I assessed what we have left with the two other animals that are left to go in the zoo and based on how much room each of these animals needs, I decided to put the lions over the road from the hyenas instead of putting them next to them. Two reasons for this, first off the lions do need an awful lot of space and I could fit them into the other section right next to the hyenas. But with this space over the rows, I don't even have to think about it. I can use as much space as I feel like using here without having to even consider if it's enough space. I just know it's enough space. It's quite big down this way. Second reason, the animals that are left after the lions go in, we've got the chimpanzees and the gorillas. And both of these are apes. Both of them have a similar biome. They're both African rainforest animals. So they really do belong together. And space-wise, they fit into that other corner really well for both of their habitats. So yeah, that's why the lions are over this side. And I guess we should go and take a look then. It's a lion habitat here. I've been feeling generous since we're down to the last few habitats. Lions here have bagged themselves some big real estate. <laughs> With this enclosure being so big, I've mixed up with different kinds of barriers. So this section here, big open section. So you've got a great view without being obstructed by the fence in there. So yeah, nice view here of the lions coming bounding down the hill. Ah, oh, one of the true original animals in Planet Zoo. I've no doubt this is one of the animals that was worked on first. A staple of many zoos around the world. You can't have a zoo without lions, can you? And here we've got the female looking very majestic in the long grass there. Really good addition to the game, that vegetation. You can actually make your own long grass. So yeah, guest pathing goes all the way around this enclosure. You've got 360 views. This side we've got the tall fence because the lions can get right up to the barrier there and you don't want them jumping over that. The hard shelter for the lions, this is built up at the back and I've sort of incorporated this into some amenities buildings at the back. It is a big space and that's intentional because I know the lions, there's only two of them in here at the moment, but there will be more. They will have babies. And do you know what? When I'm done with this, I might throw a few more females in here as well. Make it look a bit more filled up than it is. Just feel a bit lonely with just the two of them in here right now. Like I said, the hard shelter is also combined with some amenities buildings. So got a toilet here because guests are always complaining that I don't have enough toilets. Dress this up with some of the African metallic sculpture pieces here. Then other sides of the toilets, I've put in a African themed gift shop. And already the staff member here has decided they don't want to work. So currently closed. Have to look into why that's happening. Anywho, let's carry on round. So more toilets, filling the space in here, I'll be honest. Then right at the back here where the gate is for the barrier, 
I've put another keeper hut in here because I didn't want to have to start another work zone just for this one habitat and the work zone I've put this in this habitat is quite a ways from where the keeper hut is for that so just an additional keeper hut here and hopefully that means the keepers won't be walking miles to feed the lions anyway there we go another species into the zoo and that brings us down to the final four so let's see what's next up next is the western chimpanzee this is a great ape and this is quite a social species we need five of them in the enclosure to meet the social needs now the chimpanzee's biome this is a tropical western african biome and i couldn't help but notice the final animal left to put into the zoo is the western gorilla and the gorilla shares a lot of similarities with the biome and the habitat setup that the chimpanzee has I mean, obviously, Africa is a huge continent, so it's on a scale size. Yeah, it's quite a distance away. But the fact that they're from a similar region and it's a similar environment, I feel like I want to do something that's combined for these two. So that's what we're going to do. So here we are. It's the final speed build of the Every Animal Zoo. Can't believe we actually made it. That's all 166 animals into the zoo. Anywho, I'm not going to get soppy about it. It just is what it is, isn't it? All good things must come to an end. And we're ending here on a dual habitat. We've done a couple of these in the zoo before. When I think they fit well, I do like to do these combo habitats that Okay, so the animals aren't together, obviously, because a, a gorilla and a chimpanzee are, of course, going to fight if you put them in the same enclosure. But they're right next door to each other and they are sharing the hard shelter here. So it's all the same concept. It's all the same pieces and the same vegetation and stuff. But it is two separate habitats that are cleverly disguised as one. It was nice to end off the series on a tropical build because tropical is one of my favourite biomes to work with. I just love the plants and stuff that you get with that biome. Also nice to end off on a habitat that wasn't just a square box. This is a little bit of a concept thing to get to work for both of the animals here. Definitely nice to end off on something like this rather than a boring enclosure. For the chimpanzee side, I noticed that the chimpanzees are like the mandrills in that they can't swim and you can use the water as a natural barrier for them. So similar to what I did when we put the mandrills in, we've got a natural moat here so the, the guests are getting a great view over to the chimpanzees and obviously they can't escape because they can't swim. A lovely bit of realism there as I know in the real world plenty of zoos use this water moat idea to keep the animals contained. Over on the gorilla side I've gone a little different with this one and I took some influence from a real world zoo that's done really well with their gorilla enclosure. That's the Bronx Zoo in New York with their gorilla forest. A very well designed set of habitats there. There's about I think it's about 10 habitats with different um, tropical African animals in there. Some we're actually familiar with from Planet Zoo. The one thing I did notice when I was checking it out, well, checking it out online, and I'm kicking myself I didn't actually go there when um, I did visit New York this year, and I could have easily visited the zoo, but it wasn't on my radar, unfortunately. Anyway, I did notice they had the mandrills and red river hogs in the same enclosure. Now, when I put the red river hogs into this zoo, I spent an age deliberating what animal they were going to go in with because they get social interaction with so many of the animals in the zoo. And I did see that the mandrills were on the list there for them. And I completely discounted that because I was like, there's no way a real zoo is going to put a mandrill, which is you know, quite a big ape creature with a little red river hog. I thought they're never going to put them together. And hey ho, I was wrong. And here we have proof. There is real zoos in the world that are putting mandrills and red river hogs in the same enclosures. Anyway, I've got rambling again, haven't I? What I was going to say, I had to look at this real world zoo on the internet and it looked so good. I've used some of the concepts from that gorilla forest in my build here. On that note, I think it's time to take a look at the finished builds. 
so here it is this is a well sort of dual habitat for the chimpanzees western chimpanzees and the western lowland gorillas this is the chimpanzee side so we've got a moat here to contain the chimpanzees and yeah we are struggling a little bit with the lag right now so apologies about that the game is really struggling to keep up with the built environment at this point bless it it really is trying but it's a struggle i'll try and keep my movement slow and steady for this last review so i can finish up without making people nauseous so chimpanzees five of them in here and they seem to be enjoying their space we've got both an indoor and an outdoor hard shelter for the chimpanzees and this is something i saw in another real life zoo where they have a little shelter on the outside so the chimpanzees have somewhere to go during the day thought that was a really good idea bit of a weird stance here with the chimpanzees up to oh oh they're drinking water from the moat directly through the concrete nice good to know we do get little glitches like that <laughs> the game wouldn't be half as fun without it i will say anyway that i guess is about it for the chimpanzees so i guess we should go over and take a look at the gorilla side we'll start off here by having a look at the shared hard shelter so technically obviously not shared as it's all blocked off but it's the same building that i'm housing both of the gorilla and the chimpanzees in i thought that would be a nice way to show that the habitats here are connected so this is the gorillas outside section and obviously no moat for the gorillas they've got walls to contain them having a bit of a grooming session there very social and very intelligent animals gorillas so yeah lots of toys and stuff in this enclosure to keep them entertained and they will interact like that and keep each other entertained I was quite heavy on the foliage in this enclosure and that's because I was looking at real life examples of gorilla enclosures and all of them very heavy with the vegetation in those so I've copied that. The gorillas are okay with this, they're not thrilled with it, they can struggle sometimes with some bits of this to get around but generally they're okay with it. So there you have it, that is the final enclosure done in the Every Animal Zoo. However there is the matter of the last two exhibit animals going into the zoo and you guessed it, they're already in. Let me introduce you to our final two exhibit species here. First up in the middle here we've got the Western Diamondback Rattlesnake and very easy to spot this little snake here absolutely love it when they're burying themselves under the ground like that there is another rattlesnake in here somewhere but i'm not going to try and attempt to find that one we'll just have to leave that to the imagination right on to the next the final animal in the zoo can you believe it this is the yellow anaconda very big snake with the striking yellow scales there very pretty <laughs> I've clipped into the wall a bit there. You'll just have to ignore that. Shh, just pretend that didn't happen, yeah? Easy to spot the other one here. And again, in the wall. Whoops. That's because I've tried to get all fancy with the, um, the brick wall in between each of the habitats here. Yeah, that doesn't work when they go right up to the glass. But moving on, that is the final animal into the zoo. Can you believe it? it's done this is literally seven months worth of work right here this is physically the most amount of species you can get into a zoo because we put them all in there's none left to go in and you might think that's the end of it but there is one more thing i want to show you way way back in episode one or two of the series i promised i would go back and redo the combined enclosure for the african animals so that was the giraffe it was ostrich african buffalo and the now lechwe it may have taken me until the final episode but i made good on my promise i've redone the enclosure so yeah let's take a quick look at the new and improved combined african animal habitat if we cast our mind back to what this initially looked like oh boy it was in a sorry state wasn't it yeah we definitely didn't put a lot of effort into this one and oh it was bad revamping this to the animals it makes absolutely no difference they were happy with it before they're happy with it now now is it me i can hear a blooming alarm going off <laughs> oh great okay so great way to end off the series there we've got another escapee somewhere okay right let's pause and have a look what's got out 
<laughs> tiny, tiny little ostrich baby escapee there. Gone for a wander. Hey, at least the guests aren't fleeing this time. <laughs> Imagine fleeing from a baby ostrich. Look at him go. <laughs> I almost feel bad sending you back to the enclosure. It looks like they've had a great day out. But alas, it's time for you to go back to your habitat, Mr. Ostrich there. Can't have you running about like that. So yeah, time to go back and figure out how on earth you got out. Ah, gap in the fence where I've put the new hard shelter. Whoopsie, that's my mistake. Any others? Nope, can't see anything else. So yeah, let's go and fix that now. Okay, we're back and no animal escapees now. Just typical of me, isn't it? To have something like that happen right at the last moment. Anyway, I did want to show you the new hard shelter that I built for the African animals here. Much nicer than the dreary box we had before. This is yet again, one of my green buildings. So we've got a sustainable roof here, a green roof. The structure of the building is a curved shape and obviously it's a big building to make sure it can handle the giraffes here. I have checked, they can get in there, but they are refusing to go in right now just because I'm recording it, obviously. <laughs> there is something in there though. Let's take a look. Oh, it's one of our adult ostriches there having a nice doze in their new digs. Clearly they approve of the new and improved building there. That is something I promised I would do and <laughs> I granted it is the final episode but I did get round to it eventually. With that done and every animal now in the zoo, what can I say? <laughs> We've achieved what I set out to see. Whether it was possible to add every animal into a franchise zoo. It certainly is possible, but it's blooming difficult. In honour of the challenge, I thought it might be nice to take a look back at some of the memorable events, should we say, that came up whilst building this zoo. A toast to the challenge. So, let's create for 100 credits. No turning back now. <laughs> what have I got myself into? Not as busy as they were an hour ago. I'll have to keep an eye on that. In the corner is a couple of benches. Oh, and disappearing guests. This corner's where we keep a portal to another universe, apparently. A bug nerd. Not really my thing, but hey, you do you, love. Whoa, steady on. Giving all that cash for a centipede. Who knew? Mr. Creepy Crawly here, Mr. Popular. You're not supposed to be able to get up here. What's going on? This enclosure's deliberately set up so that they can't get onto that wall because I knew they could escape if they did. Scaring all the guests away. Oh, wait, why is the keeper screaming? You, you, literally, you're in there all day, no problem. Suddenly you're scared of a blooming box. Oh, does this go deeper? Uh, where's the other one? This is where we need to check. Where, where are our kitties gone? Nothing there. Well, that's a problem. There should be two. Right. Okay. So, <laughs> um, you're in the elephant enclosure. Oh, naughty kitty. What have you been up to? You are very lucky, Mr. Leopard. Got on a jolly to the elephant habitat. Honestly, here we go. Safely back, disaster averted. Oh, but there we go. <laughs> Dirty protest going on there. Let's um, let's not look at that. I feel bad, really, because I don't think the tapirs like deep water, so they're stuck with the deep water. This is far too deep for a tapir. They shouldn't be able to swim in this. I, I feel like that's not possible. Yeah, and those guests coming to the zoo, it's like, oh, what did you see at the zoo? I saw half a tapir in the water. There's something we need to talk about. It's the crowds. I'd say in the space of maybe three or four extra habitats that we've added, the crowd situation has gone crazy. I'm not talking like an extra couple of hundred people. There is an extra couple of thousand people turns up to the zoo. Stop everything. I've just started the game up and it's telling me that a wild dog has escaped. And I find this flying wild dog. Okay, it's something very weird going on. I'm a leopard escape. Again, those leopards can't be trusted. If you ended up this time. Oh, Alpine Ibex. Look at that. That was so close. You are a very naughty kitty. That was nearly a dead Ibex there. Oh, it's the dreaded bell again. I don't understand. There's no way they could get out of here. But 
Yeah, it's definitely coming from this gate. Uh, oh, oh, what are you doing out here? Taking yourself for a bit of a walkies. First up, it's the dreaded lemurs. This is no longer a walkthrough habitat because we can't have nice things, apparently. I mean, look at this, dropping trash in the middle of the exhibit. I tried the signs, I tried putting janitors here, nothing worked. People have no respects, apparently. Let's take a look inside the hard shelter too. This is a custom shelter made out of a lot of panel pieces. This means inside is lovely and bright with all of those glass pieces. Uh... Panda, did you just sit down where you pooped? <laughs> oh, don't do that, mate. You might want to sit elsewhere, you know. That's that's not hygienic. So there we go. That wraps up the whole series. I want to say a massive thank you to those of you that have watched this series all the way through. It's been no small feat to see this challenge through from start to finish. It equates to hundreds of hours in the game and hundreds of hours of footage edited into those 20 minute episodes. So yeah, a lot of work and it's the positive feedback from those watching that has kept me going with the challenge to the end. So yes, a huge thank you for watching and I really hope that you've enjoyed what we've accomplished here. The whole zoo will certainly be up on the Steam Workshop soon. I just have a couple of tweaks to make here or there to ensure it's ready for show. Sharing. Similarly, for individual habitats, over the next couple of weeks, I'll be gradually adding the better habitats to the workshop as standalone blueprints, since I've had a fair few requests for them to go up. I'll also be putting up a detailed tour of the whole zoo at some point in the next couple of weeks. I just need a little time to prepare for that because it's going to be a really long one, isn't it? With 166 species to get through. Hey ho, it feels like something I have to do, even if it's just for me. Keep a record of what went down here. So yeah, with that out of the way, this is goodbye to the Every Animal Zoo for now. Of course, I'll revive the zoo if and when new DLC drops, so watch this space on that one. Until then, thanks for watching, I'll catch you next time.